Hi, and welcome to the last in the series of the long-term business strategy. As I said before, this has been an amazing series. Um, I've surely even learned lots from it, just you know, discussing things with John, and it's kind of opened up my appetite to then go away and I've, I've you know looked up and tried to research a little bit more. Um, it's something I'm really, really kind of passionate about as well. You know, one of my main business strategies and long-term business strategies. You know, taking equity in businesses, merging with businesses, you know, you, you know, getting in contact with other people and, and coming up with a, with some deals. It's like something that's a, that I'm like hugely passionate about. Um, and, you know, finally going into this episode, we're looking to talk about building, building your business as a group. <clears throat> so one of the things that could be uh, risky is if I, for instance, was like uh, Mark the Mavens and I decided to buy a hybrid anchor, um, but something was to happen to hybrid anchor, but it was underneath the Mavens name, it's a lot of risk uh, within there because marketing Mavens is going to get hit with the debt that's that's pulled from from, from hybrid anchor. Um, so it's it's really important to, to build your business as a, as a group and have a you know, almost like a holding company and that holding company has then got the multiple different business assets uh, underneath it. Um, you know, I, I know I know of a client that that's what they do. They've, they've got that as a, as a group and they've got multiple. It's all within the same field. He's not got different businesses. It's all within, you know, financial planning. Um, but he's got multiple different financial planning companies within here. But you know, like if one of the businesses uh, you know, breaks down or something happens to them, the other ones are safe and the, the, the main business is safe. Because I don't want to build up marketing mavens and then, you know, buy over a company and then all of a sudden it's like they were in major debt, you know, some you know, you looked under the underneath the bonnet and there was a massive uh, problems. Major problems or... Um or a, another thing as well, you've got to think about brand reputation. Um, you know, marketing mavens has built, built up such a brand reputation it takes over somebody else that would the, you then find out that, that they've got a, a, another, a, a poor brand. So by building it as a group, it protects your brand as well. So it's a, it's a, it's a safer way to do it. Um, so yeah, I mean, I think uh, it'd be really good to just get right into this. And, and I know yourself, um, you just recently uh, started up Sargasso. Yeah, so, so I fi finally named the, the investment. And pretty much exactly for the reason you gave. It was how do you protect hybrid anchor from that? So when I kind of drew out the business kind of architecture, I used to kind of draw hybrid anchor, Sargasso, company, company, company. Whereas in actual fact, it's not like that. Sargasso is the top of the tree. So it's like the owner of the companies. Um, so there's just, there's really interesting things about groups. And I thought it would make a great kind of wrapper for that last episode. To talk about it so the whole premise of the group is exactly as you say it's for protection of all the assets that sit beneath it um so like for example i actually have sold 50 percent of hybrid anchors equity to sargasso but because i've done that i'm allowed to take 20k from sargasso tax-free mm -hmm. because under the capital gains alliance i'm like 12k per year tax-free with there. So even though Sargasso doesn't need to fund that money, they can do it through a director's loan legally for it. But it allowed me that structure where lots of advantages were there. So I didn't want my name on a hundred businesses and companies' house. And it's a nice, elegant way of doing that where if I invest in you and somebody goes, Oh John, John Lloyden's invested in market mavens. Mm. If it just says Sargasso Holdings, then it's like, ah, it's an investment. That's it. So you don't need to name me if you don't want to name me. You don't need to do that. People can do due diligence and they can go digging. But it's much harder to work out what, what a group's holdings are or what the equity is. That could be 2% equity. Or it could be 90% equity. So I think that's really interesting. Um, another one is, with all my businesses, I've always given them a director's loan. And if you give a business a director's loan, similar to the debts kind of rolling back onto you, if something happens to that company you lose that money. So if I had to give, say, Market Mavens uh, 10K as a director, there's 10K for it to play with. And then for whatever reason it went out of business, I've lost that 10K. Mm -hmm. But the beauty in having a group is I can give Sargasso 10K 
and then pass it to a business within my group. So High Bedanka owes Sargasso 10k, who owes me 10k. But because you never transact with your holding group, like you never raise an invoice, you never transact, you never have like revenue flowing through that company other than loans or the equity that's getting paid into it, kind of like the way a salary gets paid. So because it only collects dividends or makes payments, I think that's a beautiful thing. Mm -hmm. So it means if High Bedanka can't make good on that debt, Sargasso still owes that money. So I'm allowed to extract it for any one of the companies in the group and then not pay tax on it because it's a director's loan. Mm -hmm. So until I'm square, it's not to pay tax. Mm -hmm. So any money I exit or have spare, I can literally stick into the group and loan it and then I'll always get it back. Mm -hmm. Same way like a loan. It's not me making the loan. I make Sargasso make the loan and then it owes me the money. So yeah. no matter what happens, that person can be the worst person ever and never pay a single penny of that loan. But legally, I'm still allowed to extract it for the company. Yeah. And I'm like, that's a very nice mechanism and when i kind of looked into it i was thinking well why do more people not register groups in like to me it seems like everybody should register a group mm -hmm. realistically mm -hmm. but then the more i think about it i think it's the headache of dealing with all the administration so a lot of people don't like tax returns and dealing with all the oh i need to do my VAT and the this and the that so it's like the idea of doing 93 companies with 93 vats and 93 tax returns and you know your own tax return like a personal one is like crazy because it's just like assets listed out so i can understand that that's a headache but you know not being really brutal about it that's my accountant's headache it's mm -hmm. not my headache i don't need to deal with it. i just need to look over it and say yeah i'll sign off on that mm -hmm. um and i think that's maybe the difference is i'm kind of like peace of mind because i'm thinking the accountant's going to deal with it Whereas maybe someone that's maybe doing their own books or their own tax return, God forbid, um, that's a good first one to get rid of. Get rid of the, the thing, give it to an accountant, let somebody else deal with that for you. But especially if you're going to go down this group lane, I don't think you would want to be dealing with it yourself, even if you came from an accountancy background. Mm. Just let somebody else deal with that headache. Yeah, yeah. And then, like, um, it's good to kind of talk about groups as well. Like, you know, what's the, you know, what's the purpose of you doing it? So we've talked about this... Uh, just in past episodes and mm -hmm. like one of the things you use like you know you'd almost take the dividends out of like all the all the different companies and that's yeah. that's essentially what's going to you know fund your salary but you know that there's other ones that are essentially going to be buying the business flipping the business and then selling it on again yeah and that's you know primarily what to do it now that's it's a risky way to do it because you buy a business you know can you flip it can't mm. you know it's like anything with a house you buy a house and then all of a sudden the foundations are broken down. you're spending loads it's of money that's it <laughs> it's like um and then you're you're costing costing more money and that's where you kind of go right i've got to let it go and you know you know fold the business under a group is it's safe under your own business then oh, it's as massively we, risky as we said i think it's actually dangerous under the group as well if the group transacts mm -hmm. so people like i was warned not to do that mm -hmm. so even if it's a case of like oh do you know what i'll just send you a wee invoice for the group and it's like oh it's just a wee no. 200 pound like, no, uh, no, 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 no 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 yeah you did because now all of a sudden you've now made that a transactional mm -hmm. so it's, it's an entity so it'll be yeah. treated as such Whereas if you don't do that, it's just a folder. Yeah. So like really, it's just a folder Aye. of money. <laughs> it's in it. It's, it's literally like that. On a computer, like, open. But as soon as you transact, <laughs> it's like now you're liable and open to all the same rules of a business. Yeah, yeah. Whereas if you say that's a non-transactional yeah. entity, and they're like, yeah, but there's like two hundred k in it. Yeah. You go, there is two hundred k, but it's two hundred k as dividends. Yeah. So really, that's just to extract the profit into yeah. the group itself. But there is, it's kind of ironic in a way, the fact that you can sell your company to yourself that sells it to yourself again yeah a couple of times yeah. if you want so you can actually sell something in a chain like eight times in a row or mm -hmm. an infinite amount of times mm -hmm. in a row mm -hmm. and that's okay mm -hmm. but it seems quite a strange thing like kind of um so I, I recently done one where it's like i gave high bedanker 13k and i said to the accountant i'm going to exit the entire director's loan on a winner and then I'm going to give it to uh, Sargasso, who's going to give it back to Hybrid, and then the money will be owed by uh, Hybrid Anchor to Sargasso, and then paid out to me through there. Mm -hmm. And he was like, <laughs> like, you can see him kind of thinking about it, and he's going, yeah, no, I can understand why you're doing that. But it seems mental to kind of take money from one thing, a tax-free, add it to the top of a tree, just to pay it through to the same company <laughs> came out of. 
but that creates the legal mechanic yeah. to show that that money has now taken place from my bank to the group to the company yeah. and that the agreement's with them yeah. not with so even though on paper you could just say yeah that's what was done yeah or like we've done that it's better for it actually to show what there's the money changing hands mm -hmm. Um, but it does make you think about it like the irony of that is I'm actually paying myself three times so mm -hmm. I'm actually paying two entities that I have 100% control of mm -hmm. as well as myself Yeah. and then you know you're allowed to charge interest on that as well and there's there's all these like different things that you're thinking it's a really nice way of doing it but even if you're going to give um, you know coming back to this loan sharking thing again but the, um, <clears throat> there's lots of people I know businesses that are like look could really be doing with 10k to do xyz and that's fine. So if you've got, like, say, 30k sitting to the side, taking two punts and 10k and getting, you know, say, 20% back return on your money or 15%, mm -hmm. that's good. You know, it's nice, easy money, mm -hmm. drops in each month, pays itself back, and then you can loan it out again or buy stuff with it. Mm -hmm. um, but that's exactly what it is. As soon as I've hit that kind of threshold where I'm getting paid, the rest of it will just go into what can we buy with it. Mm -hmm. You know, what other kind of assets is there? Yeah. And it won't just be businesses, it'll be stocks it'll be properties it'll be commercial property there'll be other asset classes that sit within yeah. that same company um but it's really there as a protection mechanic yeah I, I love it i think it's a beautiful way of doing it yeah i mean i wasn't i wasn't privy to it um until i got a client and um they were taking it was like the market directors like we're taking over another business so you, this is going to be another client for you and then i was like well, who's that? You know, and you check the company's house, and I was like, who's this one? And it's like the group. Mm. I was like, all right. And then actually, when I was like, I'm going to start finding out a little bit more about this. Um, and then since that, it's, it's just, it's funny, it's like cars, isn't it? And you just go and shop for a car, and you see this. I see it everywhere. You right? just see it everywhere, and there's lots, lots more people doing it. Um, and then one of the, you know, one of the things as well, you see people, you know, coming together as groups. So, like, you know, me, you, maybe somebody else all come yeah, together exactly. as a group. Yep. And we could all, you could put hybrid anchor you know, Mavens and XYZ company under that, mm -hmm. but then we also then go out as a group to then take over other companies. Um, it's a good way of doing like a, say like a joint venture. So there's, um, I'll, I'll not name them just yet because it's like we're buying a few assets together, but we've got intention to buy four companies together and they're always going to be done 50-50 split. So what makes sense to do is to register a holding company that's the two of us that has that equity split already in place. Mm -hmm. So rather than us having to continuously go through, this is yours and this is mine, and here's the next year and this is yours and this is mine, it doesn't matter, all the equity goes to the group. Mm -hmm. And then we already have a 50% split on it each. Yeah. Um, but the beauty in that is my 50% will not be owned by me, it'll be owned by Sargasso. Mm -hmm. So like Sargasso will own other groups underneath its group and then longer term, probably it itself will be owned by a trust, mm -hmm. so that it's like kind of layered up. But it, it sounds probably more complicated than it is, and it's like, is it not more hassle than it's worth? Like, you know, you're kind of doing this. And I suppose it depends on what it is, because most people's appetite would be, I'll maybe buy a business or two. Whereas for me, it's like, I want to buy 10 businesses, you know, in three years, and I want to buy 30 in five years. Mm -hmm. Well, that's my intention. So I've got six on the go just now. And I think it's very achievable for it because when I kind of met Callum for the first time and you're thinking, right, he's got 53 businesses. You know, I don't know what he's got now. It could be many times that or less depending on what his appetite is. But looking at it, I'm thinking that's the way to do that. You know what I mean? Like I'd much rather have like 293 assets that are underneath a group mm -hmm. than be sitting here going like, oh, I run an agency. Mm -hmm. uh, we build software. <laughs> you know, there's nothing wrong with that. Yeah. Like, you know, that's a... You know, it's like the, um, what do you call it, Goodwill hunting, you know, like laying bricks is an admirable job, you know, mm. there's nothing wrong with that job. But if you're ambitious and you want to do other stuff and I'm interested in it, like I really like it. And like one of the biggest things that motivates me is like your impact, like what is it you're doing? Like, mm. so what are you creating wealth for other people or for clients? And I think this is a really great way of kind of like doing that at scale. Mm. Like I can build this bigger than I could ever build on my own. Mm -hmm in a way that's kind of not damaging to me. Mm -hmm. You know, like I can help say 30 or 40 entrepreneurs like achieve a massive amount of growth. Yeah. And then I'm part of it, but it's not exclusively mine. So it's not just like my success. And mm -hmm. I like that. I like the idea of that kind of, mm -hmm. it's not to say like there's plenty of things that I, I do think that, you know, there's a couple of like um, haulage businesses where I think I will just buy them outright and merge them flat or flip them. Um, 
but it's a different type of investment. I'm not looking at that for long-term portfolio asset. I'm just looking for it in the sense of like, there's an old terracotta bathroom house yeah. with smelly carpets and smells like cat, mm-hmm. uh, and that I can do up and you know sell it for a nice handsome profit because it's an undervalued asset. Mm-hmm. So that I think it's different kind of things. But like for me, the group, the way it works, and the more I learn about them, like I almost get more excited the more I kind of learn what you can do with them. Yeah. Whereas the accountants kind of like, I don't get it. Like, mm-hmm. <laughs> like it's not that big a deal. And you're like, well, you don't think it's a big deal, but I'm uh, seeing what it's possible. So in my head, I'm thinking, that probably means I'm allowed to do this then. Yeah. So what happens if I move a bishop this way and do that? Is that a legal move? Yeah. Yeah, no, you're allowed to do that. You go, cool. So there's six of them. <laughs> and the accountant's like, wait, what? <laughs> like, how did you get six bishops on the bottom? You're, like, <laughs> you're like, well, that's, that's the way you play the game. So they're almost teaching you, like these are legal moves on the board that you can make mm-hmm. and I'm like brilliant so you just pivot the business to more align to that way of working mm-hmm. so we can take better advantage of these kind of things yeah, yeah. so what, what other benefit, benefits do you think then of having a group you know over over doing it just I think the masking thing is quite big as well a lot of people are quite um, quite cautious about the idea of like another name showing up in their director's yeah. register and I can understand that um, and as I say, like I've said to all the, like the ones I've invested in, like I'm not bothered whether you name me or you don't. Mm-hmm. You know, if there's leverage in it and you think it can grow the company and you want to do it, that's fine. But I'll never pressurise somebody to say, no, you should be out there shouting that I bought fifty percent of my like who cares? Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like if you don't want or need that, yeah, that's great. You know what I mean? Just you know, just have me in the background and you're this kind of amazing guy that's achieved all this stuff, and I'm quite happy with that because it's not about me. Yeah. yeah, I mean, it's like I didn't invest in you so I could get like a pan up, pat in the back. I don't yeah. really care. Um, I want you to be successful because yeah. then you're going to be like, I'm really happy with the deal I made. Yeah. You know, yeah. I made that deal with John and I've grown by blah. Yeah. Uh, and if you're a more private person and you don't want to talk about it, that's cool. Yeah. I'm okay with it. But I think that it kind of masks that slightly. Yeah. I think that, I think that's the other thing as well is, as I kind of touched on, is massively on having a brand as well. Um, and your brand reputation, you know, having it under, you know, a larger group or, you know, as I said to you, if another company, you know, breaks down, it, that doesn't, it doesn't get harmed. Doesn't affect it, yeah. nobody, else in, nobody else in the group's getting harmed. Mm-hmm. Um, it's, it's just that, that one aspect of it. And I think that's a, that's a big, big thing, um, you know, essentially, because like, you, don't, you don't want any other business, you know, if you've got a portfolio of different businesses, you don't want any other businesses getting harmed um, over, I don't know, a managing director that's a bit, a bit dodgy. Hi, uh, dear. Well, I've actually had it with the, um, I used the group as a tactical move to protect the equity of Hyperdanker mm-hmm. because I was offered a substantial amount of money for 50% stakeholding. And I said, of what though? Is it of Hyperdanker? Is it of this company or that company? Mm-hmm. or the group as a whole, which would be all of these companies. Mm-hmm. And the guy said, all of it. And I'm like, that sounds like a very expensive investment in the sense of what like, you would then have to fund what 50% of all that's worth. Um, and I broke it down, like even just one of the companies, so I says one of the companies is there. So that was the one I was talking about, it's like the f- uh, 1.4 million mm-hmm. for 40%. So 50% would have been even higher than that again. That's one entity that lives under Sargasso. So if you had six of them, like Hybrid Anchor's not as big, but let's say if you had all of them under that entity, well, to buy 50% share of the group would be massive. It's a huge amount of money. But then the other thing I've got to think about is that means every single thing I build under the group, they also get 50% of that for what they buy in. So like the future potential, what they're really they're buying 50% of you as a human being, mm-hmm. not 50% of Mark and Mavens. Mm-hmm. And I think that that's a different thing. But I think groups protect you for that. Because you can say, well, I'll allow you to invest in the child, but not in the parent. And if they're like, oh, well, I would want to invest in the parent, you go, well, for me, it's too complicated because if we are closing, say, 10 to 15 deals in equity per year, mm-hmm. you're basically getting 50% of that, mm-hmm. regardless of like when you buy in. And it's growth is hard to map out. Like It's grown by X amount of 1,000% per year. Mm-hmm. So it wouldn't make sense. You know, it makes sense to them, like it's a great thing to invest in, mm-hmm. but I wouldn't imagine many companies would allow you to do that. Mm-hmm. Whereas for somebody to invest in, say, like Hybrid Anchor or something like that, you're like, well, that's different because at that point, you're investing in something that's like lower down the tree mm-hmm. and I'm not putting my portfolio at risk. 
Yeah. So I think groups can protect you where you can kind of isolate things and say these are off limits or I can't give you a share in them because that's me and Mark's assets. Mm -hmm. So I don't have say over that holding company, I only yeah. have say over Sargasso and this. Mm -hmm. What about then, you know, we talked about in the last one about eggs in the business, but how would you sell your, would you sell your whole holding company or how would you, you know, see if you wanted to exit completely? Yeah, take it on. So I, I don't want that, thankfully. But like, say, <laughs> say you did. It's actually nice in the fact that it's all folded up already. Mm -hmm. So you would just, you would basically sell Sargasso as one entity. So you'd be able to show, here is the 93 companies and the kind of profits and the P&Ls for all the companies underneath the group. Mm -hmm. This is what it's kind of earning consistently. And you can show that. Like So it's almost like, you know, the way you'd see clients and it maps out these other transaction values and what we've made off them over the years. You basically have like list items like here's a grid of the 93 mm -hmm. these are red because we took losses on them these are green because we've made profits this is the total kind of yeah. profit so on our portfolio base we are earning x amount of million per year this is the kind of like attrition rate this is how many we add in each year we've got processes around adding to the group so when they buy it they're building the entire portfolio bank mm -hmm. we're just by buying sargasso they buy all the stuff underneath it yeah <coughs> so it allows them to kind of do stuff like that um, and obviously that depends again on what's your agreements with your partners um, but that's again you can engineer a way of kind of like preventing that from happening yeah. by saying like well I wouldn't sell my equity yeah. without giving you first refusal yeah. so what have I done there I've achieved well even if somebody bought Sargasso mm -hmm. they couldn't because the groups underneath they would mm -hmm. have to have like a case by case acceptance of whether those companies want to buy back their half of the equity. Now, if they don't, then you're more than free to buy it. Mm -hmm. But you're buying it from them as individuals rather than... Yeah. Like I, I suppose if you had like 93 businesses though, or 100 businesses, you would never probably want to get rid of them all. You know, well, like, I just think of it as passive income. Like, but, why, why, why would you bother selling yeah. it? Like, I, I can understand like to do it. But for, for forever, even for I, like you. But in my own head though, I'm trying to think, right? So it's like one of my friends, uh, he's also into acquisitions, which is funny. Um, but he said to me years ago, right, I had this thing as like, right, and then I'll, and I'll go for 3k to 4k, and then I'll go with 45, and then, then 5 to 10, and then 15, and then 20k a month, like in salary, right? And he's like, wait, wait, what is it you're buying? And I'm like, what do you mean? <laughs> and he's like, what are you buying? Like, 20 grand a month, what would you be buying? And I'm going, eh, well, you know, and I'm, I was, in my head, I'm going, I don't understand the, uh -huh. the question. And what he's really saying is it's like, beyond a certain number, it doesn't make sense to pay the tax on exiting the money. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, mm, yeah, I agree with that. Because it, like, it just doesn't. Once, if you've got no debt, no mortgage, you've got a good income. So like, uh, to me, 5K is a good income. Like, you know, some people are higher than that, some people are lower than that. Like, it's wherever you decide that number is. I can live really well on that. I, I live quite basically, so that's really high for me. Um, it's, it's a good salary you put savings aside you've got a nice wee pot of money there in case something happens you've got your business you can take more out if you need it mm -hmm. um, but short of like buying a bigger property or and it's like so I, buy, I take money out and then I can invest in companies well why would you do that do that as a group Yeah. Uh, I would uh, I, I want to buy a new PC I would buy it as a company and then you know like so it's like almost everything that you list out can be purchased as a company Yeah. so then you're thinking hmm Really, it's just for the showy stuff. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I buy a Rolex or something like that. Yeah. Be like, you're going to buy a Rolex every month. Now, some people do. But if that's not your lifestyle and it's not the way you live, it kind of does stand to reason. Like, why would you just keep exiting money, exiting money, exiting money and mm -hmm. paying like mm -hmm. crazy amounts of tax mm -hmm. when it's just not necessary? Yeah. You know, even like your boat. Like, why would you buy the boat? <laughs> no, go the boat. Yeah. <laughs> My boat. <laughs> your boat. <laughs> That's, That's the only yeah. boat I'm getting just but, now. I mean, <laughs> you, you're put, put. But if you're buying a boat, <coughs> why would you buy it as an individual? You buy it as a, a business and say it's a marketing asset. Mm -hmm. I know. It's like a jet. We're, get, we're, you know? we're, getting, we're, getting, out, we're getting all the clients in. <laughs> but do you know what I mean though? You wouldn't, you wouldn't buy it as an individual. That's my point. So yeah. it's like, even if that's like a, I don't know how much a boat is, but say like a boat's like a million quid. Mm -hmm. like you want to take a million quid plus say 700,000 so you can pay the tax on it just to buy the boat or you can just buy the boat as the business and say right this is yeah. what it is and we'll host client parties on it and whatever and I'll, yeah. I'll use it in between so I just think that you know although that's kind of like the extremes of those examples 
that's kind of the way I kind of started to think about it going no nah, shit he's right like you don't need after a certain point like once you've kind of got to there you're like I'm comfortable mm-hmm. so the rest of it's kind of it's like splash cash like yeah. A, yeah everybody likes a nice watch and yeah. I'm not saying you should have a nice watch and a nice car but do you need six yeah. houses do you need 15 cars do you need you know what I mean it's just it gets crazy and no. I'm kind of going that's just not my lifestyle so I'm thinking why what car will I drive today I just, I just I think it's ridiculous yeah. but I can understand some people are very uh, materialistic and they really like it and I don't have anything against it so for them maybe the number's going to be like 11k like they need 11k a month mm-hmm. um, but I don't so I'm just thinking why pay the tax on it mm-hmm. you know? excellent so finishing up today uh, and what what would you be your business belter and actually I'm going to throw in a, a wee curveball what's your business belter of the whole series as well now that Ooh. we're finishing up the series oh that's a good question Mark I would say business built on the entire series. It took me a long time to work out that like growth by acquisition was such a powerful thing. I came into it late in life, so I was probably about 31 when I became proper aware of it. And I hadn't even realised that I'd already crossed that bridge by mergers, acquisitions and other things that I'd already done. Um, I think it's massively powerful and I think it's one of the main things that business owners like totally do not clock. It's mm-hmm. like, I don't know whether it's a case that they just don't think about it or you have to kind of be exposed to it. But it's like, for me, that was the kind of prevalent thing. So when I had those two conversations where I thought the guy buying for flips and the person that had the 53 businesses, I was just thinking, right, I am doing this wrong. Mm-hmm. Like, I am not a business owner. I'm a glorified employee. I'm doing all right for myself, but I'm literally like playing at a much lower kind of sandbox than like mm-hmm. what's possible. So it was almost like it unlocked my potential. Yeah. And I think if I had to look at like one belt out of the series, it would be the hope that that happens for somebody else that listens to the episodes, mm-hmm. that they look at that and say, I'm going to look into that. Yeah. And then they themselves achieve something that they didn't think they were possibly going to look at. Yeah. Um, to me it was profound it completely changed the way I looked at business mm-hmm. um, and that's why I thought it'd be a great thing for us to talk about and like share our experience on mm-hmm. it so that, that would be my belt off for the series so to spin that back to you <laughs> what's your belt off for the series? Yeah I, I mean I my business builder I, I feel that I'm, I, I'm quite proud of like us kind of coming up with this topic when a lot of people have probably not talked about it a lot um, it's not a lot of information about there and I think we've really went in in depth into a lot of aspects of you know buying businesses scaling businesses you know having a lifestyle business um I I was probably a little bit you know (laughs) kind of kind of thrown into it but not thrown into it but it just hit hit as a kind of reactive thing but I always kind of thought personally you know the old kind of rich dad poor dad book where you know having lots of assets so personally i was like you know want to try and get you know a house and all that sort of stuff but not really thinking about that in the, in the business kind of sphere and actually one of the most risk averse things to ever do is actually have multiple different business assets and you know that's what something that became quite a big passion for me now um it's became you know part of my kind of strategy and my longer longer term strategy so just likewise with you, you know, I wanted to share share this because it's something that's kind of popped up in my head and it's a bit of a kind of eureka moment of like, this is what, what you should kind of be doing. And I, I want to share that sort of value. And that's what Business Builders is all about, is sharing that, that value to people. So if we even got one person or one listener that listened to this and then, and then took, it, and took it, then... It would be massive for me. That that that's my that's, huge, that's my that's my huge and kind of profound thing. And they came uh, and hopefully they come back to us and say, "Hey, that's Here's you, your know. Like <laughs> <laughs> you know." So um, yeah, so uh, me kind of closing up. So thank you very much again, everyone, um, for tuning in to Business Belters and again tuning into this series. Um, if you've just watched the series on a whole, um, I would uh, just recommend that you go back to the start and start listening to some of the other uh, podcasts as well uh, there's a lot of great content there um we love we love doing this podcast um we, we love kind of sharing this information um 
again all we ask from you guys is just hit that subscribe button you know like and share and just get into the the and collaborate and get into the conversation but thank you very much for tuning in and it's a goodbye for me it's goodbye for him thank you